Friday the 13th, The Game, is a limited open-world survival horror game that puts you in the shoes of Jason Voorhees or one of his many victims. The counselor roster includes characters from the franchise's impressive lineup of movies, but you can also choose from eight different versions of Jason. Each counselor and each Jason comes with a different set of stats, strengths, and weaknesses. You can also equip counselors with up to three different perks, which you can buy using the XP you get from each match. Some of them are helpful, others not so much. On the flip side, you can buy special kill moves for Jason, again using the XP that you get from matches. The main draw of the game is the asymmetrical multiplayer mode, which pits Jason against up to seven counselors in one of five iconic settings from the first five films. At the start of each match, players are randomly assigned the role of counselor or Jason. You can set a preference, but you won't know your role until the start of the match. I think this actually works better than uh, the system for Dead by Daylight, which you have to choose at the beginning whether you want to be a victim or a killer. Uh, if you choose a killer, you're probably going to end up waiting a much longer time. So the random assignment actually kind of speeds things up a bit. If you're chosen to be a survivor, your only goal is to survive, which you can accomplish in a few different ways. You can repair one of two cars by finding the three missing components a key, a battery, and a gas can, and then installing the battery and filling up the car. These components, along with all other items, are randomly placed on the map. That and the fact that it takes time to install everything, leaving you open to attack, Fix make I'm out of here. going for the car a risky move. Plus, with up to six other people competing to survive, you could find yourself left behind. Also, even if you get the car started and going, right, you can hit stuff, uh, stalling your progress, or Jason can stop the car, forcing you to either restart or, you know, get the heck out of there. In some maps, there's also a boat, which only requires two components. This is risky too, though, because Jason is quite a bit faster in the water. Another path to survival is calling the police, which first requires someone to find the part to repair the phone box and then actually repair it, which I have never been able to accomplish. Uh, once they are called, a countdown to their arrival pops on screen. Any player that makes it to the cop's location will survive. Unlike the car, there's no limit to how many counselors can survive, but the trick is getting what you need to call the cops, and it's not even super common. The final two methods of surviving are hiding or killing Jason, both of which are extremely difficult to do. Jason has ways of hunting people down, so hiding is a gamble. And killing Jason is obviously no small feat. I think it's been done in a couple of the matches I've played, without my help of course, but from what I hear it takes great weapons and amazing teamwork. <laughs> playing as a counselor can be extremely nerve wracking, but playing as Jason is just so much fun. It's not always easy because the counselors usually run faster and they have tricks that they can use to stun or otherwise slow you down. This can include noise distractions like turning on the radio or setting off some firecrackers. Um, counselors can also lock the doors and they can hurt you or stun you with their weapons, um, which leaves you unable to do anything for a, a short period of time. Jason has some tricks of his own though, and using them will make success much more likely. Uh, one is that he can sense people running, uh, although again this can also be confused by the radios or firecrackers. Through 
the course of the match, Jason will gain access to five abilities, which let him teleport around the map, sense counselors' uh, locations, speed ahead short distances, and silently stalk counselors without alerting them to your presence. And then, when there are five minutes left, rage mode is activated, letting Jason smash through walls and doors, locked or not. I rarely get into multiplayer games, but I've sunk a lot of time into this one, with no regrets. Friday the 13th, the game, is a horror movie buffs fantasy, done a hell of a lot better than Dead by Daylight. While I may get frustrated at times, the variety of approaches mean that I will never get bored. Whoa, did you just hear that? It sounded like screaming. Probably someone getting bonked upstairs, man. Even though I'm totally down with the multiplayer, the offline or single player mode is a welcome addition. It includes the bot match, uh, which in which you're you always doing? Jason, and the out, challenge baby. mode, which is the closest thing to a story mode that you're going to get with this game. In it, you play Jason in one of ten scenarios, which each include cutscenes introducing the victims. You're then free to kill as many victims as you can, getting bonus points by exacting unique environmental kills. Friday the 13th game is an amazing experience that really immerses you in whatever role you take. As a counselor, you can feel this palpable feeling of impending doom that only skyrockets as the match goes on. And as Jason, well, I mean, I probably shouldn't say that it's fun to kill people, but look at this. It is just, it is so gratifying to kill these stupid counselors in just really brutal ways. I'm thrilled that I finally got to play this game, and I plan on keeping it around as a staple multiplayer title for a long time. And then obviously I'm going to have to break it out every Halloween. I highly recommend this game. Um, seriously guys, check it out. It's so awesome.